When it comes to making digital art, the software we use can sometimes be complicated, but design principles are often the complete opposite. Today, we're going to explore how this child's toy can actually help with our artwork. Welcome to episode 16 of the Concept Art Playbook. I've teamed up with a game designer to create a series of 30 concept art challenges for you to tackle. Like usual, Ryan has created two briefs. For the first one, I'm going to do a bit of a demonstration, and then the second brief will be for your homework. Now, my brief is to design a mechanical mural for the game Indiana Bones, which is a third-person adventure game. And so as part of this brief, it reads, Early on in the campaign, the player is presented with a crumbling mural. And this mural requires five keys to open and to gain access to the deserted walled city behind it. These keys are located nearby in the environment among debris from the wall and other neglected structures. So first things first, the brief says keys. But we don't need to be so literal when it comes to the text. From a functional standpoint, what we really need are five objects that socket into a large wall mural. When the player inserts all five of these objects, the mural's mechanisms groan and churn, and then the whole thing opens up like a big door. So instead of picturing a skeleton key, here's what I immediately think of. This toy is a perfect example of the Gestalt principle of similarity. And this is a simple one. If objects share a shape in common, or color in common, or texture, we just assume that they are related. So this toy is great. Because while you might just see colored blocks here, another way of describing this would be a collection of locks and keys. So for the dusty chamber that I'm designing today, we can just imagine this whole pile of clutter and the players kind of exploring around through it. And then in front of them, they see this big mural. And then within the mural, for lack of a better term, there's five differently shaped slots, five keyholes. And then somewhere hidden in the room around them, there are five keys that match these five keyholes. So this is really a perfect opportunity for similarity. Using contrast, I want to make sure that whatever the keys end up looking like, it is distinguishable from the piles of rubble. So maybe if the rubble looks like piles of dull, dusty rocks, then I can just make sure to use a bit of metallic sheen on the keys, make them a bit brighter and sparklier. And then just like the child's puzzle, I'll make sure that each key is different from each other key but I want to make them similar to the keyhole that they belong to. So it's sort of like five matching pairs. So what should I make it look like? We haven't been given any narrative info about what might be depicted on this giant wall mural, so really it's up to me. And recently I've been reading a book about Magellan's famous voyage where he circumnavigated the globe, so I've just got maps and charts on my mind. And after a bit of sketching, this is the general idea that I came up with. It might not look like it in this crude drawing, but this is sort of like a map of a solar system. You can imagine each of these as being a planet, and then there are orbit circles drawn around them. Maybe this is where a moon orbits, or maybe this is how they orbit around each other. But then here what I've drawn on this side is what our so-called key looks like. And if you can picture it, this is a gear on the back of a circular disk. And so if this were a big mural of moons and planets, you could take this disk, slot it into this hole, and then you could turn the entire mechanism just like you'd turn a key. So that was sort of the functional idea. Then I took it one step further and I cleaned it up a bit. So here is a, I guess you could call it the black and white line drawing. What we can see here are five slots for keys. Each of them has their own ring, and then the way that the rings kind of intersect with each other is going to give us the challenge of the puzzle, because we don't want to make it too easy. So my thought is that if you can imagine these as puzzle pieces, take a single one of these, you could imagine it rotating. And as soon as it rotates a little bit, these rings don't match up anymore. But with a black and white drawing here, we're not getting full advantage of the idea of similarity. What I really need to use color and texture to really make the keys match the keyholes. Now I should mention here, for your assignment, it does not need to look as polished as this. But let's take a look at the machine that I came up with. First off, here are the various views of the key. So the front, this looks kind of like that dusty interior. This is going to match the room. But then when we look at the rear and the side, well then it's pretty different. Here it's that glittery brass that we were talking about. As you can see, there's this key lock mechanism on the back. 
And as you'll notice, that fits into this lock. So we have a dusty wall. When it's completed, this is what it looks like. So this might match most of the rest of the chamber, but this isn't the way the player's gonna see it. They're gonna enter the room and they're gonna see something more like these three here. What you're looking at with the format of this illustration is it indicates the multiple states that this machine can go in. Here we have one correctly added key. It's both in the right slot and then it's rotated into the correct position. Here's another key that is in the right spot, but it's not in the right position. And then these three are indications of what it would look like before any key has gone in place. But just like that kid's toy, here we go. We've got five keys. They have a focal point in the center that is their color. And then that color, through similarity, relates to the keyhole. We are using just enough similarity through both material, in the case of the, the brass, and color, in the case of the five different slots, to tell the player what's going on. It doesn't need to be as explicit as the kid's toy, but really that's all this is. So let's check out where your homework is. In CryoShock, an immersive sim, Ryan has you designing power cores for a generator. So it reads, the generator is located nearby in a medium-sized warehouse, but a power surge has ejected and scattered the three power cores throughout the environment. The player must track them down among the rubble from the explosion and return them to the generator. A copy of this homework is available as a PDF. Just follow the link below. So even though you're designing power cores in a machine that they power, it's the exact same principle at work here. You're going to use similarity to reinforce a visual relationship. And then you use contrast to separate it from the unimportant objects in the room. Make a key that matches a keyhole. Have fun, and I'll see you in the next lesson.